He was a big man, almost somehow giving the impression of being unbreakable. But at that moment, he shrank down to a scant five feet. It was as if all of the negativity, the disappointment, the losses, they had taken him down physically as well. A job, status, the disgust with which everyone now saw him without question, each took a physical part of that big life force. And he shrank. She looked across the room. All she could see was his back as the sounds of the chatter quickly faded away. The few who had come to commiserate, at least superficially, gossiping over their drinks, no one actually daring to ask the main question, what next? next? She knew she couldn't say anything. She knew he would reply like he always did with his analyses and his philosophy, always the individual. She knew the words would have no effect other than to possibly bring out an indulgent smile, much like a parent. He couldn't hear her, but she could hear him, and she saw those hands. Sitting there on the edge of the bed, he looked down at his hands, studying every little detail. These were his tools, a part of him that had always been there, then why did they look so strange and unknown? reaching out to the cables, innocuous and innocent in appearance. A garot now, the hands held them, alternating between pulling tight and relaxing, but casually, with no dramatics. And he watched. The sudden crash of a closed teacup outside the bedroom door jerked him back to consciousness. He stood. He grew a foot. He walked out to help her and so did the others. They came running to pick up the pieces, his and hers, because that's what friends do. The room was together in that scene of helping to clean up what was only tea, but could so easily have been something else. At least today he had been spared from becoming a new story. Yes, tomorrow would come. But today had been saved.